Okay, continuing the trip down Space Shuttle Memory Lane, we get to 1981. And this, this uh, was the year that Columbia first flew in space on STS-1 in April. And Ravel decided to revive, revise their packaging to reflect that Columbia was the primary space shuttle flying and not Enterprise. Uh, the kit you see at the top is the 172nd scale space shuttle kit. Uh, Ravel tooled up their kit, actually I believe in 1979. The funny thing was, is uh, this is not the first box art for the Ravel kit. They actually did uh, a box art very similar to what they did for the Enterprise boxings, and indeed all the uh, catalog literature for 1978 said that the 172 scale kit was going to be released as Enterprise. Well, when it got released with that really cool looking 1970s packaging, they changed the name to Columbia. To my knowledge, none of the 172 kits were ever released as Enterprise. Well, that box art did not last long, circa 19, late 1980, early 1981. It was changed to this style of packaging you see right here. All three of these kits showcase the plastic found in the kit. Uh, one interesting little premium at the time was that each of the four kits that Ravel did, of which there are only three present, the Orbiter, the Shuttle with Solid Rocket Boosters, and the 172 scale kit. Um, the fourth one being the Space Shuttle with 747, of which I do not have an example in this type of box art, all included uh, posters. The one with the the one with the Solid Rocket Boosters included a poster of Enterprise on the pad uh, from the from the testing circa 1978. Columbia by itself with the Space Lab included a image of a rather forlorn looking Columbia during its uh, rollout where not all the tiles were attached. And the posters were probably intended to get people to buy the smaller kits even though the 172 scale offering was the big mama on campus. But uh, as you can see packaging had evolved by this point to something a little different. Okay, moving on. Uh, in 1983, uh, Ravel revamped their packaging for their shuttle kits again and did it to showcase that the new kit on the block was Space Shuttle Challenger. All four of the main kits that they had in their line, the 172 Orbiter, the 747, the uh, Space Shuttle with booster rockets, and the Orbiter by itself were all done in Challenger packaging. Uh, Plastic-wise, the kits were the same, although this was the first time that the kits had been issued with markings for all five of the original orbiters in the shuttle fleet. So you had markings for Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, and Atlantis, even though Discovery and Atlantis had not been built yet. What you see down below are two examples of a new scale that Ravel introduced. Actually, they technically didn't introduce them. Uh, these are 1288 scale kits. One of the Space Shuttle with 747, and one of the Space Shuttle with booster rockets. Uh, Ravel did not tool these up themselves. Actually, all they did was uh, imported 1288 scale kits from a company called Union Models, located in Japan. Tooling-wise, the kits were identical to the Union kits. And... They also had markings for all five of the original Orbiter fleet, even though the Union kits tended to be specific to one specific Orbiter, be it Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, or Discovery, or Atlantis. Now, one thing I should like to point out is that 
Monogram also had a 172 scale shuttle kit at the time. It was an orbiter. I currently do not have an example of one of those kits in my collection, but uh, what I can tell you about it is just like the Ravel packaging, it featured a picture of their model kit on the box art. The model kit, not any, uh, not any beautiful artwork or anything like that. Although their artwork did showcase the orbiter orbiting over a nice painting of the Earth in the background. Um, that kit was released about a year after Ravel's kit, and some of the features on it are a little more accurate. For one thing, Ravel put on the, the, uh, the etched tile lines on their orbiter, and they actually based them on uh, Enterprise's tile configuration at rollout with the fake tiles. Monogram said, hmm, rather than doing that, let's just release the orbiter with just the main details done in raised fashion and not worry about doing individual tiles. So, so there are two different kits out there as a result. Well, I thought I'd go sideways here on the next space shuttle model kit. What you're seeing in front of you is the Gillow's Space Shuttle Columbia, which came out circa 1981-82 time frame. Gillow's is not a plastic model company. Gillow's makes stick and tissue balsa models, and the vast majority of them are rubber band powered so they can fly, uh, free flight. But they also introduced a uh, series of kits that were referred to as show, build and show where they were not designed to fly, they were just designed to showcase the construction that was used in the form of the in the form of the ribbing detail in the wings. Uh, so they got on the shuttle bandwagon in the early 80s like everybody else and offered this kit. The scale of this particular kit is 177th scale, which places it a little smaller than the size of the Ravel and Monogram 172 scale shuttle kits. Um, in terms of shuttle kits, it's actually not really bad. I mean, it does take a dirt, certain different style to build, but you really get an education on how shuttle was built. Because the construction methods used here, even though it's balsa, are very similar to what the aerospace companies did. The packaging design I really like. Uh, it features a picture of Columbia landing from the first landing in uh, April of 1981. And I can tell that because I can look at the tail section and see what the ohms pods look like and what the nose look like. Uh, interesting thing was, is uh, according to an article I read about Gillows in the early 1990s in uh, the local newspaper, they this was their best-selling kit until January 1986. Then when Challenger broke apart, it took them about a decade to sell all the remaining stock that they had sitting in their warehouses. Kind of puts it in perspective just uh, how much the Challenger accident set back the Sprace program, both on the NASA side and the public perception side. You can find these on eBay for not a bad price. Uh, I have two of them. One is half built. I do plan to finish it because I think it's a nice bit of nostalgia from the past. I really, I really like this kit. If I can find a third one for not a lot of money, I'll, I'll do so because this is this is just a nice piece of nostalgia from my childhood. <laughs> 